told you, today is jam-packed. Um, when we come to Thursday, like I said, we're going to do an eigenvector and eigenvalue problem for the first 20 minutes. That'll help a little bit with this. And then you'll have the test and the other stuff, and then you'll have the homework to really deal with this. Um, I also, just as an aside, can be free in my office right after class today as well as Thursday. So if you have time today, you, I'll be there from 11 to almost noon um, if you have questions. So our last and final bit, now that I've drained you all of any energy whatsoever, is the central idea of quantum mechanics, which is a Hermitian matrix. If you recall, we defined this. This is called the dagger operator, H dagger. It is the complex conjugate. Transpose. And the idea here, it turns out that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix are always real, and the eigenvectors are always orthogonal. And this is central to quantum mechanics because the eigenvalues of operators, in this case of a Hermitian one, are always real. These are the possible values you'll measure. Quantum mechanics is actually quite simple in many respects. It's one of the simpler math you do once you like linear algebra. And it's, if, if I'm going to have a measurement, I have to represent my measurement by a Hermitian operator. And then all the possible values of what I might measure are the eigenvalues. And since they're always real, they're guaranteed to be. That's nice, since I can only measure real numbers. Um, and then the eigenvectors are guaranteed to be orthogonal. And that's nice because then they can make an orthonormal basis. Once they're orthogonal, you can normalize them, and then you can make a really nice basis. Um, and then it turns out that the matrix that you make out of them has very nice properties. It's what we call unitary, which means that u inverse equals u dagger. Notice, if everything is real, then we have the case of things being orthogonal. O inverse equals just O transpose. You need the dagger because there's often complex numbers floating around in um, quantum mechanics. So you've got to do the complex conjugate transpose as opposed to just the transpose. And the final piece I already mentioned that we want to know for quantum mechanics is if we have two matrices that commute, then we can diagonalize them at the same time. And the reason we can do that is because they have the same eigenvectors. And I've now just taught you all of quantum mechanics. The Hermitian matrices having real eigenvalues that you measure is the rules of how you get the measurements. And the eigenvectors are the wave functions that are the eigenstates. Um, and so that's how we describe things in quantum mechanics. And the fact that two things commute basically is the uncertainty principle. If they do not commute, then those two measurements can't be done at the same time. Therefore, you have an uncertainty. Um, if I think about measuring x position and momentum p, momentum and position do not commute. If I do a measurement, I have to do one first and then the other. If they commute, it doesn't matter which order I do them in. By definition, that means I can measure them at the same time. If they don't commute, it matters which order I do them in. And now, by definition, I can't measure them at the same time. And so I've just taught you the uncertainty principle and the core basics of quantum mechanics. So you can just skip next year. <laughs> um, it is worth very quickly if I have time. Oh, and I do have four minutes. It's kind of cool to quickly show this result. And basically, it comes down to let's consider an eigenvector r of f. So r is an eigenvector of f. Now, I can consider the operation g acting on fr 
which will also equal lambda g acting on R. Because lambda is just a number, I can move g through the lambda. That's easy to do. Now, because g and f commute, and only because they commute, this can be written as f acting on gr equals lambda acting on gr. Now, what this means, right, gr is just some vector. I have f times some vector equals lambda times some vector. Well, what is that vector v then? An eigenvector. So by definition, v is some multiple of r. Right? Remember, r is not unique. r can be, is only determined up to a multiple. So v is some multiple, call it lambda prime, times r. Well, I've just said v is gr, right? That's what I did. So g times r equals some other number times r. So since r was an eigenvector of f, it's also an eigenvector of g. It just might have a different eigenvalue. So the eigenvalues of f and g aren't the same when they commute, but the eigenvectors are the same. And that is at the core of so much what we do in quantum mechanics. And it turns out to be why. How many of you have done you know, the quantum numbers of the hydrogen atom? Right? The hydrogen atom, we talk about n, l, and m, right? The only reason you can talk about n and l Angular momentum and n is because angular momentum commutes with the energy for the hydrogen atom. So you can simultaneously, you have two operators that commute, energy and angular momentum. Since they commute, they have the same eigenvectors, the eigenvectors being the states of the hydrogen atom with different eigenvalues. So because you have the same states, you can do this. It works. If angular momentum and energy did not commute for the hydrogen atom, you would not talk in terms of N and L. Well, you might, but not at the same time. You can't be in a definite state of both of those operators. So this really is the heart of quantum mechanics here. And with that, we'll finish. I realized there was a ton. Today's le lecture segments, really good that we videotaped them, because there is a lot there. It's very dense. Normally, I don't talk as long as this. I try not to. I try to have you do more stuff and more questions. But there was a lot that I needed to get through. So hopefully, it was not too painful. <laughs>